Good day to you. You know, when you're watching news on television, if you happen to do that, or if you're reading a newspaper, and if you are, you're a very rare person these days in your age group, or if you're watching news or checking it out, I should say, on the web, or if you happen to come across news on the radio, what you're really doing is you're listening to a conversation that's taking place about the country in which the news is being aired. It's really a conversation about what matters in the country, about what is right or wrong in the country, not just about what is happening in the country, but about what is dangerous and what is safe and, and really what the country is all about. And so that's the way I want to approach this chapter as we take on chapter 10, which has to do with news reporting. Now, I call it news reporting because I'm really more interested not in the development of news, the writing, the editing, etc. I'm really more interested in the delivery of the news to mass audiences. And it's important for us to consider that given what we know about the way that other countries finance their media content, that in the United States, news, for the most part, is a product. It is a product in other countries as well, but nowhere do you see that except for perhaps Japan, like you do in the United States, where it's a product that's rolled out with the best graphics, the best looking anchors, the stories that pilot test the best with audiences. News is really delivered to be something that's profitable, that's going to get the biggest audience possible. Compare that to a different kind of news, even here in the United States, public broadcasting system news or PBS news, as well as all of those state news organizations and channels that we've talked about in other countries, mainly European countries, where news is fulfilling a, a, a public service function. It's not a profit-making entity. It doesn't have to get the biggest audience. Its main job is to inform the public about what is going on. So in this chapter, I try and probe news by taking apart some concepts to help us get a better look at what news really involves rather than just reporting what is, quote, new, which is, after all, the basis of news. It's something that is new. So the first way that I, that I take a look at news is the dimension of bias versus objectivity. And I make the claim in this particular dimension that there is no such thing really as objectivity. I mean, if you don't believe in abortion and you're reporting on an anti-abortion march, or shall I say a pro-life march, if you're a person who is the opposite, who you do believe in a woman's right to choose and you're attending an anti-abortion march and you're supposed to be reporting on that, it's going to be pretty hard for you not to hide some of your feelings, at least some of them, in terms of what you show on the video and a couple adjectives that you may use. You may call the crowd agitated, for example, when the crowd was merely just boisterous. There is a difference. And that is because there is no such thing as objectivity when it comes to news. News is biased, just like everything else in life. It just has to do with the extent to which the news is biased. Now, in the past, news used to be just openly biased. You could buy newspapers in Britain, France, Sweden, even here in the United States in the early 1900s, and the newspapers were definitely labor newspapers or conservative newspapers or or Democrat newspapers, or Republican newspapers. Today, most newspapers at least try to give the feeling that they are objective, even though we know that there's no such thing as objectivity. The next dimension I look at with news is the entertainment versus the serious reporting news. It's become a big problem here in the United States where most people are watching their news by watching The Daily Show, even though we'll see if that continues with Jon Stewart gone. But people are also watching TMZ, and they're just watching a lot of news that has to do with celebrities and fashion and pop culture. And they're not watching as much news about Afghanistan or Iraq or urban blight or highway infrastructure or the economy. Those are serious subjects. They're not exciting at all to watch, at least for most people, and they take a lot of concentration and a lot of background knowledge to be able to understand them. But nevertheless, most of the reporting that's done today is on celebrities. It's on, on people who are famous or scandals or corruption or all those other things that we consider to be entertaining. And then the last area of news that I take a look at is the depth versus brevity dimension of news. 
depth has to do with how deeply does a an article go into a subject do you find that the newspaper is covering the same story let's say it is the unemployment rate not exactly the most exciting thing unless of course you're a college graduate really thinking about being employed in the very near future which some of you are but if you're looking at the employment rate, if you're going to get into depth with it, then you need to cover it with several articles in one newspaper, and you need to cover it on a daily basis. You need to cover it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, to do a series on it. That's how you achieve depth versus brevity, which is kind of like radio news is most of the time. It's just running through the headlines of what's going on, never to revisit those headlines. So now moving on to the countries, without going into too much detail, which you can get from the chapter, and it can otherwise be rather dry delivering it here on video, when we're talking about France, we're talking about news that is actually very serious. Four of the five newspapers, in fact, are political newspapers, four of the five national newspapers, mostly to the left of center, politically speaking. There is, in fact, a socialist government in France right now. But the main point here <clears throat> is that newspapers <clears throat> excuse me, do not engage in a lot of entertainment. Most of them are very, very serious, using words that require quite a wide range of vocabulary to be able to understand the principal thoughts, and generally being a person who is well-read in order to understand news. When it comes to Sweden, newspapers are also very political, but we know that we have these morning newspapers. These are the newspapers that are the serious ones. Most of them are to the left. They have a bias towards the left, not to the right, towards the left. And in the afternoon, we know that we have the entertainment newspapers, the afternoon newspapers, the sensationalist newspapers, which are neither left nor right. They're all about, re about revealing political corruption and scandal and drug use and, and um, infidelity and all the other things that are considered to be sensational news. In the UK, each newspaper has, how I, I don't know how to say this, but it's a very specific identity. It's a very specific identity wherein the newspapers actually have kinds of um, monikers, if you know what that word means, it's associated with them. And, and please excuse my language here, but this is, this is how it is described, and you can find this in your book, and I'll only mention a couple of them, but when you look at the newspapers, it says that the, the Times, for example, is for people who think the country should be run as it used to be run. That's the way that the Times is described, one of the foremost newspapers. When you talk about the Guardian newspaper, it's, it's for the people who think that the country should be run the way that the Guardian portrays it. And then when you talk about the Sun newspaper, and this is the part I'd like to ask your permission for because I'm going to repeat things as they actually are, it's for anybody who it doesn't really matter as long as the person that they're studying has big tits. Yes, I said that, and that is the way that this newspaper is described. It's because it has, it has a page three girl um, each and every day, which features a topless woman. And you can find this newspaper being read by big by grandmothers and by by people who you would not suspect to be reading a newspaper, because as we have noted before in Britain, newspapers do have a very serious content to them. Um, nevertheless, um, U, uh, UK newspapers, all national newspapers, have a very, very strict identity, left, right, center, the Daily Mail, for example. Its identity is closely associated with reporting on the royal family. Almost every day you can find a royal family story. When we get to the USA, almost all news has a goal of objectivity, but the goal is not necessarily reached. News is, for the most part in the United States, an entertainment form of information. Even the serious stories, like the serious story about the police officer who has killed a young black male, um, apparently over a struggle over a taser gun, which you can't even tell on the video that's being shown on TV right now whether there was an actual struggle, even that is being played up from a, an entertainment angle. They're they are showing the young African man in his military uniform, evoking emotion of patriotism and service to the country. This young black male who is killed by this police officer in the wake of many killings that have happened in the last year between white police officers and black males. This is serializing 
an entertainment, entertaining dimension of the news. Now, I'm not saying it's entertaining in, in terms of it being fun or exciting or, or anything to do with happiness. It's one of the most tragic and sad things that you consider. But it's entertaining from the point of view that it's not really focusing on the, um, the serious dimensions of, of, of the racial divisions that exist in police forces and the ways in which um, African Americans are often interrogated by police officers. Now moving over to other countries, in Mexico, most news, TV, radio, newspapers, is not only extremely serious and political, but it is also extremely biased. On television, you can have a reporter who is covering the Middle East, and they will make a comment that says, it's not right what Israel is doing, or it's not right what Palestine, not really a country, but Palestinians are doing. It's not right. You will see this kind of commentary in Mexico news. It does not strive to the, to the degree to which we do for, um, for objective news. Um, when we come to China, China, of course, is extremely biased news. The news is almost always pro-government. And every single day on Chinese communist newspaper news, you can see a ceremonial official, as I've noted in an earlier instructor video, a ceremony of an official walking around, greeting a dignitary from another country, showing, showcasing China to the world, showing that China is an up-and-coming country and is a very modernized country, has a lot of wealth to it. Um, this is the kind of news that you see in China. You don't see very much objective, critical news at all. When it comes to Ghana, you have news that is roughly divided between public newspapers and private newspapers. And the public newspapers tend to be more biased in favor of the government. Again, we're talking about a developing country here. And if you can go back to the, to the developing philosophy of media, you know that countries um, with that kind of a philosophy, the media help the government and the government help the media. The government helps the media by providing access to information and the media help the government by trying to do some positive reporting. So you see some of that, uh, or a lot of it, I should say, in public newspapers in Ghana. But when it comes to private newspapers, that's where you see a lot of criticism, a criticism of whatever government is in power. You see a lot of bias and a lot of criticism towards uh, a government minister who has accepted payment from a, a contractor who, oh, who just happens to have been awarded a contract to build a new highway. That's the kind of news that you will see in Ghana. And finally, when it comes to Lebanon, we also have a country here where news is, is extremely biased. It's biased because each newspaper is going to be aligned with a particular religious sect. Um, and there are many different sects of Christianity, of Islam, and of other religions that are present in Lebanon. And you can find the newspaper is really, as they say, preaching to the choir. It's repeating the assumptions and the values that the people who already have those assumptions and values want to read and hear about in the newspaper. So if there's one thing that I really want you to get out of this chapter, there, it is that there is no such thing as objective um, news that is out there waiting to be captured. News is constructed according to human beings. Human beings have biases, biases and values. And even though you may try to strive for the object, to, for the goal of objectivity, it's really impossible. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and get there, but it is impossible to have a purely objective news source. And so that will wrap up today's video lecture on news reporting. I hope you have a great day.